and go. So, all right, we are on immersion, and uh, we wanted to talk about pulling on the first date, pulling immediately, trying to pull a same day, or uh, or taking your time. Uh, but to start with, so what day is it? Day six. So six days. Um, so this is day six. So then arguably one more day. Um, and how many pulls so far? I've lost count. <laughs> six or seven? Six. six or seven. And there's like return ones, right? There's an, like number closed and then pull. Or you pulled one and then pulled another one another day. Yeah. So total how many individual girls? So five then, because you had two returns? Yeah. So five. Mm. And it's Saturday, so another date is lined up for another half an hour from now. Mm-hmm. And what, it's a new one, and then tomorrow morning, and possibly, Monday. and possibly Monday. So there's no more tonight, there's only one date today. Okay. Unless the other ones get back. So almost a new pull, almost every day. But yeah, day one was, um, you got here, travelled all the way to Sydney, got here super early in the morning, and then had a break, and... Um, and we got in at lunchtime, so that's kind of half of a day too. And you're tired. And um, how's the legs and the back? Legs okay. Having it's fun? Fried. The back's fried? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, probably shouldn't be eating chips. Um, part of the the theory is that the earlier you can pull, the more likely you are to... I guess part of the thing is, the idea is if you sleep with the girl as soon as possible, not because you're just after sex, it's more because if you sleep with her earlier, you're more likely to have her come back and then build something. If you guys can come up with a better way to do it, I don't know. Um... But generally, if you sleep with her, then she's more likely to come back and see you again. So that's the general idea, and that's been tested not only by myself, but almost every guy that I know. So what are your thoughts on pulling too fast? Because we were discussing that before. Mm. Uh, My thoughts are... I'm not personally comfortable with it as much. I prefer... I'd like to get them... Mm, maybe oh. you might not be able to hear you. Yeah, actually. I'd like to get them comfortable with the idea of coming to my place, but I don't necessarily want to mm. sleep with them on the first date. Mm. Um, generally, I, I would actually prefer to sleep on the second or third. That's a, that's, it, that's a, that's a funny thing. I think a lot of people that follow pickup, they just assume that it's all about just getting sex as soon as possible too, and not all guys want that either. Yeah, I don't. They're kind of lonely. Some guys want a girlfriend. Some guys, you know, want some more fun in their and life. It depends on the girl. Like some girls, I'm okay. Just I like them so much. I like doing the cat, mm. the classic dating, and I, I can wait a few weeks if I have to. If I just enjoy their company. Yeah, well, that that's also like I'm I'm of the same thought process. If they have good communication skills and you have that first date, yeah, and then uh, you, on that first date, you then, she communicates with you and goes, oh, it's too soon to have sex, but I want to see you again, I'm happy to wait as long but as it takes. But they may not say it, and I feel like if I try they, to pull... They rarely say it, yeah. I know, if I try to pull and they kind of know what I'm doing, mm. I could almost like snap the fishing line and I may not see them yep. again, and that's kind of where we've been debating is like... Mm. I feel like I yeah. could lose more girls this way if I'm pulling way too fast. Yeah, but then then the opposite is, okay, so she doesn't have the communication skills, let's just say, and then you try to pull, right? And then she just makes all these false assumptions about you that it's not about trying to lock her in as a girlfriend or try to build towards a relationship. 
and um, the op the opposite can happen too. You pull a Aussie girl, you know, like yeah. the Ger the German girl. If you if you didn't pull, then she might be like, oh, he's a pussy. Because the opposite happens just as much. Oh, I wanted him to take me home, but he didn't take take me home. So it's like, you you can't win anyway. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, the only way you're gonna get good is personal experience. Really, mm. you have to gauge it. Because I've had girls, and I asked them. They said like, if you tried to, I pulled them home, and they're like, I'm just... glad you didn't sleep with me on the first mm. date because I could sense that you wanted to, but you waited. And they're like, so when I saw you the second or third time, they were like, I'm glad. Cause they just That's like... still an assumption. She was trying to read your mind, so she didn't have the communication skills to say it on the date. Then it wasn't. It was yeah, but when I that. like kind of debriefed them after, they're like, mm. if you had tried to kiss me or like make out with me in your at your place the first or second date, they're like, I probably wouldn't have texted you and wanted to see you again. Mm. So they're keep, like, keep in yeah. mind the girl that comes like you try to pull on the first date. I think we covered this as well. Yeah. You know. And she can see all the signs of you pulling. Is a girl that's been there before and probably been pulled multiple times and has, sees all the signs, but the most innocent girl can be pulled easy. It's almost like Logan Paul's fiance at the moment. Uh, they haven't had sex apparently. They're, they're mm, getting married. Okay. <laughs> but uh, this guy, Dylan Dall Dallas, has been posting every other guy that she's been with. There's like 50 something guys, ex boyfriends that she's had, and he's posted all of them. And now that she's run the gauntlet of dicks, with Logan Paul, she's making him wait. It's kind of the same as trying to pull a girl that's ran the gauntlet on the first date. Well, she's like, me... I've run the gauntlet. I'm not going to run it with you. I'm going to make you wait, even though you're not really getting the prize. So that's not across the board, but I've seen that myself many times as well. But like people are like intuitive. It could be like the same. Like I've never been to Brazil, but I know I would be scared walking in an alley. Like I didn't have. I don't have to be in that situation to know it's a. It's like an intimidating situation. So like these girls could be apprehensive a little bit, even though they don't have the experience. They have some idea mm. that it could be dangerous for them. Like I just met mm. this guy. And keep in mind, they feel what you feel too. Yeah, no, I guess so. I let's just say you're pulling and she goes, you can tell it's like, She's doing this. And you're like, oh, okay, let's let's go to the pool, let's go to the games room, let's go to the let's go back down, we'll go out and get a something else well, outside. And, you, and you, that's your job too. Yeah, no, for sure. Not to pull past the point because the point where she says, Oh, I'm uncomfortable, she's probably well, given a lot of this body gives language. you a chance to get to know the girl. Some girls are maybe damaged, they just don't know how to say no. I've been in that situation where a girl's like I don't know how to say no to guys, so they just fall holy shit. Me. That's dangerous. It is dangerous, right? So, mm. so it's your job to yeah, see the to slight see the body things language. And you're like, okay, what's going on with this person? Like, why is mm. this too easy? Like, she doesn't know how to say no. That's why and with one of them, the, the, uh, the one <laughs> off the approach, you bounce straight to Woolworths, grab some food, and went straight back yeah. home. <laughs> I was there, going, oh no. That's too soon. Oh no! And I was calling you. Yeah, I know. It's like, yeah, chill out. But it's I, like, <laughs> I had already debriefed you that I'm not super comfortable sleeping with a girl on the first mm. date. Anyways, uh, we were just doing this to, to for, see how for far coaching, we could, right? Yeah, for yeah. coaching, and you're mm. like push your boundaries to see how like yeah. it is, and yeah, you gotta hit the, you know, you gotta hit the wet balls and the the broken balls yeah, exactly. to practice tennis, right? We're not here to just hit the pristine ones, so. Mm. I shouldn't be eating chips. And that's the thing is, like, we're here to practice. Like, you got to practice enough to see all the different scenarios that you're going to get in. You're dealing with human beings, so the variables are pretty endless. Mm. The other side of it is the opportunity cost. So let's just say you... You meet a girl, there's no real communication that it's going anywhere. You take on date one, you're a total gentleman. She turns up to date two, you're a total gentleman. You, you pay for everything, you go pick her up, you plan it out. All week you think about how to make it a good date. And then after date two or even date three, the third date, 
just ghosts you, doesn't explain why. It's almost like she got hit by a bus or something happened, she just disappears into the ether. And that happens to so many guys too. And then they reverse engineer, they go back and they're like, what did I do wrong? And then, so it's not only the time investment, there's not only the loss of, you know, you're spending money on it, there's the opportunity cost, you could be out trying to meet other ones. And then at the end of it, because she ghosts you for no reason, there's the emotional baggage that you start carrying. Because <laughs> that's what it is. That's an inner game thing that we're trying to avoid. Yeah. That's why we have all those small little hacks to try and avoid that. Because by date, date three, you might start, you're like, you're planning the wedding. You're like, oh, that's the, I'm, you're naming my children, her children already, you know. And then um, she just disappears into the ether. Well, I would suggest... And you don't, doesn't explain why. And you're texting. Suggest to guys to not get emotionally invested unless you've slept with her at least a few times. You can't just say that to them because they're not going to... They're just going to get emotionally invested anyway. But that's the game. Well, if you're, if you're day gaming or night gaming enough, you should have enough leads to kind of keep you busy we discussed that as well because uh-huh. you can have i could have a hundred leads but i'm still going to have a favorite and if that favorite ghosts me and i invest in it too much because a lot of it isn't you just getting invested in the girl and she disappears because the early in the early stages if you keep it short and sweet and you you try for it it's it's, it's obviously better if they get attached to you first but in western society that's why we need games well, because mean- Imagine you sleep Men with her are. on the second date, then she goes to you. Then you have like a that physical happens attachment. as well. You have a physical attachment in there too. Whereas at least if she goes to you and she didn't sleep with you, maybe it's a, you could look at it as a it's as kind a, of the same. You though. could reframe it like, oh, maybe she you know got to the doctor and she's got like AIDS or some itch and she's like, oh, I don't want to give this to this guy. So you could look, you could reframe it for yourself that it's a blessing in disguise that she you fell could, off. You could lie to yourself, yes. Yeah, why not? <laughs> it's my life. I can lie. <laughs> I'll yeah, reframe it in a way But it's whether you believe it or not. I'll reframe it in a way that empowers me. Mm. Right? If that's part of the inner game, why not I just reframe it? That Cause you know, some of them you'll be like, oh, I like this one. You know? Yeah. Because out of all the ones we met this week, You've got your favorites, and you've got the ones that you well, don't care if they disappear. Look at it this way. It'd be like, I'm glad she showed me her true colors in the first week rather than showing me six, seven months down the road after mm. being invested with her for so long. And generally, they fall off before the third time you sleep with them as yeah. well. So if you can so, get that first one in early, you know. Yeah, I mean, pull fast. I don't. I guess don't wait more than a month. I think that's way too long. Oh, my God. By then, you're like, planning your children's names and yeah everything. like i think that's a little too long depending on the girl if you really and she doesn't really even like tell it. you that she's on a break with a boyfriend but if you are going married if you are going with the mm. long game at least have some other girls going on at the same time while you figure out the other mm. one right yeah i'm happy i'm happy to like i think a lot of guys are happy to wait as long as it takes as long as the girl has communication skills because it's really comes down to her coming back that's what we're trying to do and your own personal enjoyment too i mean just sleeping for Mm. just so you can get the sake of the lay no no well that i don't think there's many guys out there there's psychopaths out there but most guys are sleeping with her to try lock her in it's a retention strategy more than anything and it's also an inner game way to protect yourself you know that's why i keep trying to convince you of why this is so important (laughs) um yeah, because obviously you're going to get to date, third date, fourth date, and if she ghosts, then it's like you're carrying that baggage with you. Then there's such a churn rate with guys that get into game. There's, so, there's such a churn rate of guys, like the amount of guys that have, you see them enter the groups in Sydney and then three months later it's like, what's with all the ghosting? How can I... Well, then the guys are like, well, here's some ping texts. You know, the ping text. Oh, send some photos of kittens and shit. And then hope she comes back. And then three months later, the guys have all quit, you know, because they're, they're not aware they need to protect themselves emotionally. I think it's far more brutal on men than it is on women. Oh, yeah. Game is hard. Like, mm. some guys just may never get it just because they're socially awkward most or them, whatever it is. Most of them don't get it. And they, they either 
become psychos, like psychopaths that just treat everyone the same and never get attached. And you see those guys out on George Street all the time, but um, you never see them with a girlfriend. Well, that's why indirect, I think, is so valuable because mm. you can build a lot of social uh, interaction, build the, mm. the reps far longer, and you'll actually start to pick up on things. Whereas if you mm. just go, I think I told you this before, it's like if I'm going direct too often, you can't get in as many approaches. You can't get in as many, mm. you don't get build that data for yourself as to what's like acceptable, what's not. Like even in indirect or like, well, not necessarily just indirect, I guess we're kind of conflating indirect with uh, being invisible and getting into the set smoothly. Yeah, right? you're getting into We're kind of conflating the two. They're not okay. exactly the same, but... Um, I guess like indirect's more like you're not you're not professing your love and showing a lot of intent which it's like you're giving if you're always giving people say like if you're always giving and being super nice you're, you're adding value to the world no you're just dying inside every time it's thrown in your face <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's definitely it's like i'm nice to all of them and they treat me like shit's so the nice guy next thing you know he's reading no more mr nice guy is getting bitter and it goes down the red the red pill rabbit hole. You could still be nice. You just don't gotta profess it. You can be kind. And yeah, you can be nice. So yeah, you obviously, kind of yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. have to be. But like to 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 give them unwarranted. Yeah, you're putting validation. them on a pedestal. That's, that's putting them on a pedestal. Yeah, that's yeah. not the good. That's not a good way to start at all. Because mm. it really hurts you at the end of the day. You're like, oh, I've been so nice to everyone, and all these girls are shitting on me, and yet bitter, and then. Then you bring that into the next set. It's like, I'm going to yad stop the fuck out of the next <laughs> one. I'm going to get revenge. You know, they, they, those guys quit. You know? Yeah. Hmm. But, um... Yeah. I, I guess the... This conversation's really just to try and convince... Well, it doesn't matter. Like, I, I guess I'm putting it on YouTube. And you'll, you know... It's like, um, I'm of the belief that trying to pull as soon as possible is the strategy <laughs> because of all of those reasons that we discussed, yeah. all of them combined, it puts you ahead of the game. I would much prefer to have a real, keep my power in the interaction, you know, keep as much power as I can because off the cold approach, you, you're generally losing a slight bit of leverage. Yeah, a and then once you try to pull as soon as possible, you're trying to retain it, and you find out a lot sooner too. And yeah. with with the feel too, like you, like you're pulling a, pulling, you know, like almost the girl a day or whatever. It's like so it's been a good run, but over time then you understand stand it more. You get enough in, you know. Like I don't know how many I've pulled, you know. Like I had a, I've had you know like pull versus lay ratio or something like that. You know what I mean? You get to see um, the retention rate offered and not getting stressed too. Yeah. You don't you don't build up the rapport and start getting all bitter. If it it starts fast and ends fast, she makes a decision after the first date. She doesn't want to see you again. Um, it's better than you like because also the bandwidth in your mind. You have one date and then next weekend you're looking at we've done a lot of admin right you're looking at the text message going what's the perfect date plan for next weekend and you've already you've already it's like the sunk cost fallacy you've already sunk all this time into this one girl and then next weekend you've got to like sink more into it and then she ghosts you on sunday it's like that's a killer and then, then you reverse engineer it, and you're like, oh, I should have tried to pull on the first date then. It will protect me. Now I'm bitter, you know? Yeah. That's another thing, too, because you, I guess you got to, when you go back home, then you can uh, trial both. Get the data for me and let me know what you find out. And if, and if you're doing three date plans and you start getting bitter and you're like, they fuck these bitches then you know <laughs> that you should have been pulling on the first well, I mean, date. <laughs> I, I mean, I already told you that I had some, like, I already had some success back home anyways. And yeah. I know that, like, based off our coaching mm. calls and stuff, you're just like, mm. um, like, there were some that I could pull on the second date. 
But then there were some that I liked her so much. I'm like, okay, I'll wait. I'll wait three weeks. I still hang out with her. I'm not spending mm. much money. Yeah. She's a kind of a cool girl that like, oh, she's like, she's okay just going for a walk at the beach. Mm. She's cool just grabbing like chips from the store and just hanging out at the park, right? I guess mm. it gets kind of weird when like if you're going out with a girl for a long time and you're going on expensive dates, she's like, I want to go to this restaurant. I want to go here. Then for me, I'm like, that's mm. a red flag. Yeah. And I will pull out actually. I'll just like. It's like the one for tomorrow. She wanted to know where. Remember? She yeah, was like, she was kind of like. Send me the dress. And then we say, we said, uh, just meet me at this yeah, the location. Yeah. And then I'll walk you. We'll walk there together. Exactly. Because if she wanted to know the location, then she'll look at it and say, oh, it's not a it's not a five star uh, restaurant. It's not a Michelin whatever. So therefore, I'm not coming. You know what I mean? And then, then you know that she's just trying to use you. And for even it. that's not a perfect science. You could go on a pretty nice date with a girl. If you want to risk it, spend mm. fifty bucks. She may actually still be cool with it. Like, oh, yeah, that's a risk. That's that's you have to play that out. Be like, do I want to risk spending fifty bucks on this girl? And that's where or, the whole emotional emotional damage comes in. Yeah, because you don't know. The just not knowing is part of it. You go on three or four dates and then you look back and you're like, and she ghosts. Then you start thinking, what did I do wrong? Was it this? Was it what I wore? Was it this? Did I chew with my mouth open? You don't even know. And then next thing you know, you're kind of like stagnant for a yeah. brief while because you're car carrying all that baggage. And then the solution is trying to pull as soon as possible. Because you know, DG and, you know, you go to, you, you go out a you go do night game, those numbers don't convert. Like, day game numbers convert a million times higher than a, a night game number. Because they're drunk, they don't remember who the hell you are, and they just delete all or block everybody that they, yeah. and they just hand in their numbers out like anything. They're not going to turn up on a day, so it's pull or nothing in the nightclub. You know how many num how many makeouts and numbers and useless numbers are like made out with the girl, hung out with her, <laughs> got ten phone numbers and zero nothing comes from it. It's pull or nothing. Um, but if we start to treat kind of DG similar way, um, you know. So, well, anyway, this uh, I think this video is long enough, but. Um, I think I've pitched my case. <laughs> yeah. Plus I have to eat in the next 10 minutes. Oh shit, okay, yeah, we're gonna go yeah. then. Date in 10 minutes. Anyway, um, that's the video.